Okay, so the second game of the finals will be played on Mars. And the civilizations obviously are gonna be quite a bit different this time around. He's gonna be having Fargo playing with Oranos. Then he's gonna be joined by Son of Ach and Raven as Poseidon. So Oranos and Posse, that's quite a nice combo. And against them it's gonna be Boxwager with Set and Kronos from Myth of Ageology. Hmm, interesting combination. Set and Kronos. Actually, I remember remembering too many. Too many options like that, frankly. So I'm gonna be really curious how that's gonna be playing out. Because what I can imagine happening, for example, from that combination is that they might be uh, going for some, of course, standard temple from the Kronos. Some an extra opponent. I'm not sure if. No. It's a bit of a question if against the Posse or the Oranos. Hmm. Not really sure. Kinda depends. You can see that both of their gold mines are fairly nice. At the back near the towers. This one is probably a bit more further away from Poseidon. But I will be probably trying to jump on the Oranos. Because Oranos is the one who can be gold starved. A bit easier. Because obviously he needs all. He basically all his resources. Well, he needs gold for all his units. So you cannot do anything at all without gold. So that's something to potentially go for and think about. So therefore I might be imagining the Kronos like transporting temple like there. Or maybe somewhere to the top, doesn't exactly matter. And then trying to abuse the gold. And then the set will be shifting sand in to help with his army as well. I mean like maybe. Maybe it could be some kind of idea. Obviously it's not all that much foolproof because then if the Poseidon plays this properly. Then he's gonna be having quite a power unit in there with the Hippicons. Basically, it just depends if the if Fargo is gonna be able to survive long enough. Or what you can be doing is that you can be going for the temple, as I said. But then, no, uh, it would be better for Ra, obviously. Some kind of will rush. But obviously, with Set, he can still be kind of effective in that as well as he's gonna be getting all the extra animals. So yeah, there's something to be said about that, even without the skin of the Rhino. But we'll see what's gonna happen here. Just a kind of ideas, could just as well be played fairly standardly as Oranos versus Kronos, that's kind of like an okay fight. Obviously the Oranos is gonna be still having the faster units, which is a massive advantage, but still something that can be played about if you're gonna be properly walling and everything. That's gonna be Relic for Hoppit, Spimer, Ulfsak and Murmilo Hack damage. With the next one being available for Village Movement Speed, that's very nice, especially for Atlanteans. As their slow villages can be used in any kind of Rainy bills that they can be finding and Feathers of Fenrir is very good. Not only against Set, obviously, but also on a map like here where you're gonna be fighting plenty of like piggies and such and animals that are gonna be defending against you, then you might be really wanting some kind of advantage like that as apparently one of the boars is getting lured by the posse. And be getting it next to the town center here with Relic for Scarab Pendant. Hmm. No, look at that. I doubt the behemoths. That's maybe something that could be helpful. Maybe something that could be helpful for the Kronos, not entirely for the set. But maybe you could be playing with that, as it's kind of a fairly common strategy for Kronos in team games. Not sure if in 2v2, in 3v3 is a whole lot more. To transport the enemy temple next to Radek prior to Heroic Age. And then basically just make a, I don't know, 2-3 behemoths extra on top of the starting one. And then have fun with the enemy TCs from the back. That can be working rather fine. So favorite is one of the last relics here. Uh, so otherwise, for example, the town centers. This one is fairly interesting position here between Myth of Ageology and Fargo. As uh, that's literally in the middle of them and also in the choke point. So this is fairly important tactically. Also can be abused from the water here. So some dogs there and it's gonna be under threat. And from the right, like from here, I'm not certain. Can I almost look into that that might be in range. Not really 100%, but it almost seems that it could be. But well, at any rate, what is definitely true is that the other TC, you can see here all the way to the left, it's not exactly all that helpful for Myth of Ageology, but if he manages to control like both of them, this one and the one to the right, then obviously he'll be in quite a great position to completely control what's going on, because there's another choke point here, and it will be obviously quite well controlled as well. Oh, come on, right now screwed up my windows slightly <laughs> because I clicked outside of my game and say so I don't exactly bind the monster window don't use any kind of tool for that as I mostly used to it already over the years 
Not level once upon a full moon, I misclick. And thank you very much for the host, Matrius. Thank you very much for the host. Uh, so you're gonna be finished with the tournament, you're gonna be switching to some live games. So if you're gonna be having still some good entertainment there, then potentially you're gonna be going into some games with you as well. And as days go, or the derby goes, you're gonna be having the tempo already drop into the middle, kind of weirdly. You can see he's gonna be protecting obviously the gold, so they're gonna be trying to jump onto the wood line. You can see he's trying to block it from the mm, jumping into the tower. Fortunately, it worked out, and the teleport range from about like here, it's kind of ridiculous. Kind of ridiculous and definitely something that maybe would be fairly interesting if the Atlanteans are a bit more vulnerable in that. But yeah, well, since there's a lot of crying, how Oranos is weak lately. <laughs> Even though it's not really all that much. Yeah, well, it's mostly based on player opinion, let's say. And then, not sure that something like that would be exactly possible. But it also wouldn't be possible, because that's pretty sure that it's gonna be hard-coded. Nothing to be done with that all that much. I'm not sure it's gonna be any kind of, like, range for the towers from which uh, you could be teleporting in. But you can see here to the top side, it's gonna be Fargo. Probably not having all that much of a problem in the defense. I think it's gonna be pretty much fine at this point. And as this is gonna be heading into a full-on double, they probably kinda all in in Myth of Hology with Box Vigier here. You can see it's gonna be at least a second TC for the set anyway. As he's trying to buy himself time, but in the end it's gonna be right on Son of Arkan Raven. Get in a front TC, because since he has seen that the opponent is jumping on his ally, then he can definitely afford it and get some good map control through that. At the same time, it also means that he's kind of going to be leaving it on his own, or leaving him on his own a bit. In the defense, so far he seems to be working fine there. Whereas inside his base, I don't think he has all that much of a problem. Because obviously right now the opponent doesn't have all that much of a... All that much of an army so far. Yeah, I'm just going to wait for potentially the towers, that would be quite a nice help. It to be going a long way towards some kind of protection. You can see that so far only one stable, or the one table, sorry. One st yeah, one stable. <laughs> Why did I say one table? And for some reason, he's not entirely wanted to help all that much. Almost as if he was thinking that, ah, screw him, he's fine. He's gonna be surviving this. I'm gonna agree in that he will. He seems to be very well set up and the gold is nicely protected. It was very well played by Fargo in there and here. Yeah, it seems like it's gonna be already heading home, and therefore even the military buildings will probably be forced into changing their territory yet again. Oh well, thank you very much, Guilty for of Wow, five, five get its subs, damn. Thank you very much, hope everybody, everybody's gonna be enjoying. I even seem Kleman AoE in there for the Age of Empires 2. So when you are here, if you are still here, then tomorrow I'm gonna be streaming, and on Friday as well, the Euro Rumble. Tomorrow it's... Uh, well, let's, let's right now go for the one that I remember. Friday, 13 GMT, it's Slaps versus Oceania. Gonna be streaming that. And tomorrow at 18 GMT, there's another match. Which right now I would be really liking to remember. Let me pause for a moment. Because it's gonna be bugging me if I don't. It's gonna be bugging me quite immensely. And it's gonna be Poland versus UK tomorrow at 18 GMT. Well, it should be quite a high level matchups all around. But yeah, I hope that everybody is gonna be enjoying the subs. Raha Kanareva, Flame CJ and Bar. It's also for AOC and Steffi Killer. So that everybody is gonna be having some kind of enjoyment maybe of that one <laughs> emote icon or some such. So yet again, thank you for the support, Kilti. Right. Appreciate it. As you can see right now, the region is certainly turning against Myth of Hology. Uh, this early attack didn't exactly work out all that well, but yeah, well, Fargo is gonna be right now seeing ways to punish that quite heavily. And while there is quite a solid army, unfortunately this villager seems to be also joining in the underworld there also. And well, there we go. It's gonna be right now resulting into the gold being saved. Of course you can see that all the military buildings are gone. This one actually got destroyed, that was Temple. That's maybe a bit of a problem, as Myth of Hology is trying to get a second DC. But yeah, well, unfortunately, this is right now gonna be time. And he's gonna get raided by Son of Ayak. Now he's deciding to join into the battle. I'm thinking Myth of Hology could be thinking. And he's gonna be also switching into a raiding on the left against Boxvager, who is still having some hunt all the way to the back. You can see plenty of gold mines, though. Excellent map for the Egyptian. Excellent map for the Eggy. And yeah, well, unfortunately, even the wall is not gonna be finished all that in time. You can see he doesn't have all that much protection right about now. 
So he was going for the heroic age. You can see the Neftis is almost there. But you can see that right now, all the way to the right flank, Fargo is gonna be having quite a bit of a match. You can see another village is destroyed, and it will result in into the GG's already right now being called because they just. Yeah, well, kinda ever since that early double didn't work out all that much, it inevitably usually means that the team is gonna be a bit set back. I mean, like, not necessarily for the set, but the Kronos is gonna be quite often paying for that a bit more. And if the Oranos doesn't suffer any kind of massive losses, which he doesn't or didn't receive pretty much like any, then he's inevitably, inevitably, sorry, inevitably gonna be back and he's gonna get a bit overpowered by the enemy army. So I'm thinking that Myth of Ageology committed a bit more than he should have. You can be doing that and like making a few units, some kind of cursory raiding and be done with it. But he connected, to the, he really committed a lot more and therefore it resulted in a bit bigger uh, kind of like lashback in there from Fargo. And of course with the joining finally of Son of Aachen Raven, who wasn't exactly there in the early defenses. Then, yep, that is pretty much it. Okay, so that was actually fairly confidently defended, let's say, by Fargo and Son of Aachen Raven. <laughs> I'm wondering if they were communicating about it. Basically, just Son of an if Fargo didn't exactly even want any kind of assistance, or if Son of Aachen Raven just kind of looked there and said, ah, he's gonna be fine, I'm just gonna be playing my own game here a bit. <laughs> Everything is possible, who knows. But let's check into the post game. That will be right now Fargo, obviously with the high score, deservedly so. And you can see even the big, big gap there with Fargo getting the most because of the military being massively better than everybody else in the game. So otherwise the economy not gonna be that different between the players yet. Okay, 28 there, 21. As far as the number of the units. You can see Box figure obviously he didn't exactly get all that much of a fighting going on. He wasn't pretty much only the animals. With quite nice advances, 431 for all of them, besides 33 here for Son of Aachen Raven, so almost the same, but 847, that's pretty decent to TC fast the heroic. With sending Pharaoh away on raiding. With the shifting sense, that's not really bad at all. But yeah, well, you can see the army. He didn't start building the spearmen yet, so obviously he couldn't have been them prepared, even with the heroic age on the Hippicons yet. But it didn't, wouldn't have to be a, all that much of a massive problem with the back gold mines. You'll be probably able to drop a Migdol under normal circumstances. But here in the 2v2, there really wasn't much of a much of an extreme reason to be too hopeful. As Fargo was having the situation well in hand in the on the right. GG.